The unoverclockable has been overclocked. Tesla decides you, you don't need a charger for your electric vehicle and Microsoft gonna be putting ads in your free to play games. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. In case you wanna show off what you're having for breakfast, you can tweet using the hashtag, hashtag breakfast, and then we can see and talk about it here on hot news. But what we're gonna talk about first of all is the 5800X3D, which is AMD's brand new chip that's supposed to be debuting this coming Wednesday. And according to all official reports, including from AMD themselves, it's not overclockable unless you happen to be on an overclocking team at, let's say, a motherboard manufacturer, and then they give you like the ability to do it because that's how we're getting a beyond five gigahertz on the 5800X3D, thanks to new overclockers coming out. The overclocker TSAIK or SAIK, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is overclocked the 5800X3D to 5.14178 gigahertz, which is beyond what AMD currently has it going and above the previous world record on the 5800X3D, which was 4.74 gigahertz. The way that this was done was not the standard traditional overclocking method where you adjust the core ratios, but rather with something known as BCLK overclocking or base clock overclocking, which essentially just changes everything about your system. It can affect system stability, it can affect your RAM, it can introduce a whole host of issues, so it's not the most stable method. Usually you tune the core ratio first, but having the BCLK overclock with the core ratio tuning got them to 5.14 gigahertz, which is much faster than AMD was letting on. But again, this is because MSI has allowed them, number one, to have access to the chip beforehand, and then number two has probably allowed them a tweaked BIOS so that they could go ahead and overclock it nonetheless. This is not something you and I are likely to do at home, but it does show where there's a will and money and connections, there's a way. and there's a way that we're gonna see what's going on with AMD's next Ryzen 7000 series CPUs because we're getting we're getting leaks of a B650 motherboard running at some surprise voltage on the V-Core, 1.532 volts, which in case you're not familiar with AMD's Ryzen chips, typically you're like 1.35 to 1.4 in the normal range. If this is what it is steady and not something that's just a spike as they took the screenshot, then this might mean that Ryzen 7000 could potentially either start with higher voltages or scale really well with higher voltages, which might mean overclocking might be a new thing, or this could be a screenshot that doesn't necessarily indicate of anything of actual performance as it actually is happening because it's just a screenshot and doesn't really indicate anything that's going on in the world at all, which is exactly the transition we needed for crypto stocks. Bitcoin down 1.99% right now to be at under $40,000. It's just been, it's been wibble wobbling for the last week or so, just kind of above 40, below 40, above 40, below 40. It's kind of sitting there right now. Ethereum also also down 2.3% to be below three grand, kind of waffle in the same way, and Dogecoin down 3.5% to be below 14 cents. In case you want to save a few cents, you can check out UFD deals. We're bringing the hottest tech deals that are out on the internet. We got the Rode Lavalier Go microphone going for only $65 right now over on Amazon, which is a substantial savings of 34%. This thing doesn't typically go on sale that low. Pretty good deal. Also, in case you're looking for two terabytes of storage, Western Digital has the SN350 two terabyte WD green drive going for only $150. $5 over on Amazon right now, which is savings of 38%. It's not PCI Express 4, only has roughly three gigabytes per second read and write, but that should be good enough for a lot of you. It is QLC, however, so it's not a, an amazing deal, but it's good. It's a good deal for two terabytes of storage in case you're just looking to host a few things on there, just keep some, just like cold storage, that's a good setup. But while we're looking to save you money, it looks like Tesla's looking to cost their customers a little bit more. Tesla announcing that they are no longer going to be delivering cars with chargers. Yes, my friends, a electric vehicles that do not ship with chargers. You will have to figure out that situation on your own. Elon Musk tweeting out that usage statistics seem super low for the mobile chargers that they include, so it seemed wasteful. On the minor plus side, we will be including more plug adapters with the mobile connector kit. Just like iPhone, just like Samsung, you cannot get your Tesla with an electric vehicle charger anymore. However, after some backlash that was received on the internet, Elon Musk saying that they're gonna drop the price of the charger by $75 and also people who are currently expecting delivery and potentially expecting to take home a charger with their vehicle. People will even get their cars this week. Uh, Tesla's customer service saying, if you have not taken delivery, you're not getting a charger. Uh, I will say straight up front, I am very much against this. It seems like a very uh, profit move. This is very 
stakeholder centric and not very customer centric, which let's be honest, Tesla's not been very customer centric for a lot of the stuff that they're doing lately. But the fact that they're not including it and also not including it for people who are expecting to take delivery right now and may not have made other plans to charge their vehicle is a bit of a letdown. But additionally, even if you want that mobile connector charger that comes with the car normally, even though they dropped it by $75, it's out of stock. You physically cannot pick one of these up. You might have to go third party or you might have to do what Elon Musk is trying to encourage people to do, which is pick up one of their wall connectors, which is not simply plug and play into any outlet. You actually have to get an electrician to install for you. So if you're planning on picking up a Tesla, you have to allocate another $500 for the wall connector and probably another $500-ish for the electrician to come out and install it for you. So add another grand to your Tesla charger, but at least Tesla gets the extra $500. They lower their cost by not shipping the mobile connector in there. They're making more money than ever. I think this is a really terrible move for the adoption of electric vehicles as people who are probably picking them up may not know what they need in order to charge it. Tesla does have a really good charging network with the supercharger network so people can charge that. But if you don't live close to one, this might actually create some issues for you. And this seems like a very just anti-consumer move in a world where I hopefully hope that it does not get picked up by other electric car manufacturers. This is something that I think should be included in the cost of the electric vehicle that you can charge it at home. I, even if the usage statistics are low, having it in my car being ready in case I find myself out and about and I accidentally don't have enough charge because I didn't plan correctly, being able to plug into a wall outlet, super helpful. Just having it last second and not even being able to buy it is a huge problem. If they were fully in stock, maybe I'd be less concerned but the fact that you cannot get one as they're removing one, like it's it's not like a phone charger where you can just go to the local store anywhere and buy a USB charger. This is not how this works. Some people may not live anywhere near where they can charge their electric vehicles. And I honestly just think this is a bummer move for the customers. Also in another move that's gonna save Tesla money, they're announcing that you can no longer buy out lease options. At the end of any lease with any of their Tesla vehicles, it used to be that the Model 3 and Model Y couldn't be purchased out at the end of the their lease, but now as of April 15th, they're extending that through their entire fleet, whether it's the S, X, 3, or Y, you cannot purchase it at the end, especially as used car prices have gone up and even Tesla used cars being more expensive than they are new, it would potentially cost Tesla money to not just resell them by themselves on their own website. But as we're talking about Tesla, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about Elon Musk and the Twitter buyout that was developing last week. Twitter announcing a what is known as a poison pill initiative in order to potentially prevent Elon Musk from doing a buyout of everything that's going on. It'll trigger if any shareholder has over 15% and make it so that they can potentially dilute the shares by offering common stock options to people who are already shareholders, thereby reducing the leverage of the person who's trying to buy out the company. But Elon Musk is no longer even Twitter's largest shareholder. Vanguard announcing towards the end of last week that they have been purchasing, not be in reaction to Elon Musk, just as part of their portfolio strengthening that they now own 10.3% of Twitter, whereas Elon Musk only owns 9.2%. So he's no longer the largest singular shareholder, even if it, he's a person, it's still like they, Vanguard has more power than Elon Musk at this point in terms of raw share options. But while we're talking about money being made, Microsoft doesn't want to lose out. They are now working on a way to sell ad space in free to play games on the Microsoft Xbox store. It's not quite clear how this is going to work, but Microsoft looking at virtual billboards to sell ad space in the games that you aren't playing and developing a private marketplace. Microsoft declining to say if this is really happening, but saying that they're gonna strive to improve the experience for developers and players, but didn't have anything further to share about how they're gonna infest your eyes with more ads than you've ever seen before in your entire life. My eyes! In case you wanna see more Apple chips than you've seen in your entire life, we just have to wait a little bit for the M2 chips. Bloomberg reporting that Apple is now testing up to nine different computers that will have their next generation Apple M2 chips, making things faster. Obviously, we have to wait for this. There's been tons of rumors that Apple was going to release a MacBook Air with an M2 chip anywhere in the last six months. That hasn't really come to fruition, but I'm looking forward to whatever Apple has up their sleeve, considering just how revolutionary the M1 and its subsequent
subsequent variants have been for the competing computer industry, as I'm trying to say all of that. And we also got indication of AMD's next gen stuff, the refreshed RDNA 2 GPUs popping up at a French retailer with some pricing. Don't necessarily take this as what the pricing of these GPUs are going to be, but the 6950X, 6750X, and 6650X popping up. 6950X starting at 3151, the 6750X starting at $1,400, and then the 6650XT starting at 889. That was a weird way to say that number, but I did it anyways. And what I'm going to do anyways is leave. Go, go watch meme review from yesterday. It's good for your soul. See you tomorrow, my friends, for more hot news.